I also designed, while I was at AR, a, uh, the AR turntable. The basic principle of which was that all aberrations in turntable performance must result from unwanted relative motion between the pickup cartridge and the record. And so I mounted the pivot of the tone arm and the uh, bearing of the platter as rigidly as possible relative to each other. I mounted them on a steel I-beam uh, formed in the shape of a T so that I could suspend it from the top plate in a balanced arrangement. And this isolated the working business of the turntable from the outside world and from the motor. Those equipment reviewers who were able to make measurements and the uh, consumer organizations that reported on, these, uh, on this equipment reported that it had the lowest wow, rumble, flutter, and acoustic feedback of or any of the other turntables that they had measured. And yet, the AR turntable was one of the least expensive turntables in the market. It was $78 then, I think. And of those turntables with any pretensions to quality, it was by far the least expensive turntable. Uh, later, when the so-called high-end began to take over in audio, some of the equipment reviewers used to talk about the turntable as the most important element in the sound reproducing chain. Uh, I think that's nonsense. The job of the turntable is to stay out of the picture. And if the turntable has low rumble, wow, flutter, and acoustic feedback, it will do that. Oh yes, and it must also maintain constant speed, which would be flutter, in the face of slight changes in load which occur even because of a heavily recorded passage. Uh, but the, these equipment reviewers talked about uh, the effect of the turntable on the sound stage, this, that, and the other. One of the magazines in England uh, praised me as a turntable designer and then published one of these type of this type of review. And if they held the pistol to my head and asked that I design a turntable with very good sound stage, uh, I couldn't do it because I wouldn't know how. Mm -hmm.